You are listening to Ayahuasca Talks, and I am your host, Rebecca Hayden. Journeying Within is a powerful way to begin or continue to heal and grow. To learn more about working with me to do this using hypnosis in an empowering way, please email me at rebecca.hayden at gmail.com to set up a free discovery call. Welcome to another edition of Ayahuasca Talks. Today I have Dan Motok with me and he is a personal transformation facilitator and mentor. He's the founder of Shamanica Institute and hosts sharing and integration circles and support group meetings in Montreal. Hi Dan, thanks for joining me. Thank you for inviting me Rebecca. Yes, it's been uh, a long time in the works you and I back and forth over social media and connecting on different things and now now we get to do this, yay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> excited to be here. <laughs> yeah, and um, I mean, we're both really focused on the integration journey and helping people with their integration or just their spiritual growth journey. And uh, it seems like what we're going through these days brings back that whole concept of life being the ceremony. And at times it's a difficult ceremony <laughs> and that's what it feels it, like lately. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's very good to, you know, to make this, uh, this point that, uh, you, know, you know, some people, uh, I mean, most people, let's say, uh, they travel down south somewhere, you know, to join a retreat for two weeks and... Uh, have certain experiences or to join a meditation retreat or have a certain practice and they see that ah, there's the time for a ceremony but actually the daily life you know every day it's a ceremony the moment we wake up and until we go to sleep there's the ceremony and then if you are a, if you remember your dreams and you are a lucid dreamer that's a, the ceremony continues so it's a 24 oh, seven yes. ceremony <laughs> yes <laughs> I do tons of dream work. It's just been a part of my spirituality ever since the beginning, because I, I started to delve into shamanism before I, I began the, the medicine work. So that's always been there for me. And it does remind us that this magic and these challenges and all of this wonderful and sometimes not so wonderful weirdness is, <laughs> is with us all the time. You know, it's accessible yeah. even in our daily life. And so... Um, it's good to remember that because we are, we we certainly have access to a lot more than we than most people imagine. Yeah, a lucid dreaming and and uh, dream work. It's a very good good practice and a very good integration tool. Yes, yeah. that and meditation and hypnosis, which is exactly. what I work with as a journeying tool, and all of this stuff is great. But, you know, in the end, we're still faced with the idea that every day we do have to find ways to apply these things. And yes, they they help us change. There's no doubt about that. But we will be given challenges. And, and lately, there's lots of them exactly, <laughs> for exactly. so many of us. <laughs> well, uh, uh, the outside world, it's a collective projection of our inner personal world, you know, right? Uh, the separation between people and countries that we see on TV is the collective expression of our own separation from others, from life, from earth and heaven. Yeah, and, uh, those fragmented yeah. parts of us. Yeah, this global crisis, it's an inner crisis. It's just a projection mm -hmm. on the outside screen of our inner landscape, you know, our, our inner psyche, you know, uh, a landscape. Mm -hmm. And uh, like every crisis, you know, it's a moment for transformation uh, and an opportunity to stop repeating things from the past. You know, it's our way as humans to evolve. We, we create crisis so we can jump ahead. So it's a great opportunity for us to evolve. It's important and, to remember that. We can all lose sight of that very easily <laughs> when things get, get really dicey and get shaken up, that these are rising to the surface, these things, for us to heal. And Exactly, yeah. And even though there's a whole story attached to it on the outside, uh, what we're really going to make a big difference is continuing to delve within and understand, okay, what does this mean to me? And 
it doesn't mean we're always going to figure out and make those connections. Sometimes we can if we form those intentions. And there are other times, uh, like what's coming up for me lately, is this continual sh- surrender message, you know? Yeah, yeah. surfing, uh, you know, surfing the new waves, you know, instead of trying yes. to row the boat. Yes, yeah. surrender, it's a, you know, it's a big work here. And, you know, and as you mentioned, so we see all these things happening on the outside world and but it's good to take responsibility and look inside and see yeah how is this how do i respond to it do i react to it do i respond to it and this is where uh, these shamanic journeys or plant work for for someone who worked with with these plants uh, they come very very useful they become very useful because what's happening in a ceremony is very similar with what's happening you know, in a daily life on the outside, you know, we are like at the beginning of a ceremony now, you know, when, mm-hmm. was, when a certain entheogens or, you know, or a sacrament is served and the reality, the way we, we knew it is starting to shift a bit and it's starting to change and we are scared and it is becoming uncomfortable at times because we are facing the unknown, we are facing change. And the same reaction that is coming in a ceremony or in a meditation or in a vipassana retreat uh, is the same process in a sense that it's happening right now collectively. And we are going through as humanity as a whole through this. Yeah. And I mean, even though we may each of us be experiencing it differently, we are going through this together, whether we see, <laughs> whether we have experience of this fragmentation or not, this is a collective it's shift. A collect- it's a collective hero's journey. Probably you and your listeners are familiar with Stanislav Grof's uh, work. Uh, he worked a lot with, with perinatal states, you know, all those states around uh, the birth, you know, the, the, the mother and the baby is going through and he divided those, uh, you know, that uh, that period of time in four matrices, and is the first one before the construction, uh, 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 the contraction are starting, uh, when the fetus sits in a place of peace, of peace, and is being held there, and it feels safe. Then is the second matrix when the contractions are starting, and things are starting to become a bit uncomfortable. Uncomf- uh, the fetus is scared, the baby is scared, doesn't know what's going on. It's a change. So, And then is the third matrix when it's going through the birth canal and the fourth one when it's coming out in this world. So us as a collective, how I see it, we are in a second matrix now. The contraction has started. Things are starting to shift. Mm-hmm. Old, old systems don't work anymore. They are melting away. So we need to let go of the old and embrace the new and but it feels like uh, it it feels uncomfortable at times and but it's, it's a birth of a new way of being so those uncomfortable parts are the things that we're shedding that are coming up for us and uh, exactly. yeah. and that's yeah. the important thing to remember that there is something that we're going they're mo- moving through right now and and I think that this is this shift is is inevitable. We've been working up to it for a long, long time. Everybody's going to experience it differently. And for those of us that are engaging intentionally, those uncomfortable feelings that come up, they may actually match some experiences we've had in the past. And this is how we respond to things. We have patterns that are set out from early mm-hmm. times. And For those of us who had really shaky early childhood experiences, what I find is that you don't have to attach it to anything. Like I don't have to, oh, this reminds me of those times. Those memories may come up. They may not. Sometimes they do. But I have learned to just approach it as much as I possibly can with open curiosity. Be aware, be the watcher, be the observer of these things that do come up and Lately, it's been more about recognizing the familiarity of some of these feelings that come up and work my way through them, but also know that I don't have to go into them. I don't have to go and and rehash any old stuff. It's just more of an awareness because the way that I'm being asked to to move through this now is is with full surrender. (laughs) 
<laughs> and that's not always easy, right? Because when these challenges come up and we've been trained for like decades to, to approach these things very differently to, you know, either go into action or to freeze or all of these different reactions that are trauma responses and to fall into a state of surrender feels like completely counterintuitive. Yeah. And yeah. It takes work. It takes it takes real work and intention and to practice and practice. Yeah, and practice. And yeah. and even if it doesn't always happen, there's it's like we have never ending opportunities to hone these skills and to continue to do it and to ask for assistance and to always open up just that's I think sometimes when I can't fully surrender, opening up is is the next best thing because I'm opening up to assistance in in surrender, you know, instead yeah. of closing down. Yeah, I, I mean, if you, if you can't surrender, at least be curious. It's a good it's yes. a good start, you know. Yeah, because sometimes <laughs> we're like before we we know it, we're thrown in. Something happens, right? Or something comes our way and we're just immediately thrown into this state that's really not always the most peaceful state. This is life and we will experience these things at times, especially now, right? But what I find is that when I can't fully surrender right away, there takes time to come back to this presence where I go, oh, wait a minute, okay, I don't have to go into this right now. <laughs> I can be aware of this and respond differently. And if I can't fully surrender in that moment, I can usually open up. And as you say, be curious or open or you know, not go into that inner lockdown. It's so interesting to me that these terms that we are hearing are so similar to those inner states, right? That we go mm -hmm. into, you know? Definitely. Yeah. 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 And surrendering, I mean, uh, no, the process already started. If we are many, if, if we manage to surrender at some point, uh, you know, sooner or later, you know, the moment we are facing some difficulties, the process already started. It's a natural process that is unfolding. Sooner or later, we'll get it. You know, some of us are more stubborn and try to resist or try to, to you know, try to, to go in a different direction. But sooner or later, we all, all get it. You know, how, how is this process of, of surrendering? It, it's unfolding. And uh, a practice of meditation is very helpful to navigate those states. A, a, a practice of presence, of not being identified with your thoughts, not being identified with your emotions, with your story, just being pure awareness, pure presence, like the sky, that it's, you know, yes. the, cloud, the clouds are coming and going, planes are flying, but the sky is the presence that is there, that it's, it's witnessing all of that. So a practice, any practice, a practice of, of meditation in particular is very helpful in these states. Instead of going in the mind and trying to control, resist the experience, it's like, oops, this is just an experience that is coming my way. I'm just holding space here. I'm just aware. I am the witness of what's coming my way. And I let mm -hmm. that come through me. <laughs> yes. And even, you know, some shamanic practices that I found really, they always seem to kind of, I don't know, come to mind. This is why it's always good to, to have some tools, because then you, you find ways to assist, right? Um, okay. yeah. When you can open up, that's great, or uh, become curious, or sometimes there's something else that you want to focus on. It happens to be a windy day, and I ask the wind, help me through this process, help, help blow this peaceful state into me or help this wind blow away this agitation so that I may be oh, at peace, you know, calling in the elements to assist. That's beautiful and it's very helpful because, you know, I, I ask, you know, the shamans in, you know, in the South, how they see all this global crisis that we are going through collectively and each of us personally. And they, they see like, we, we lost the connection with the sacred, you know, we, we lost the connection with our hearts. We, 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 we are disconnected from nature. We are disconnected from our inner nature. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we lost the connection with our dreams. You know, is this loss of connection with the sacred? We, we are lacking community. It's something that, that all that, you know, in all this uh, traditional society, you know, it exists and they, they have their myths and their rituals that we also lost 
uh, connection uh, with them. And we, uh, they see that we are, we are going through this kind of collective uh, soul loss. Yeah, I mean, this is this has certainly been all of these things to some degree within our world, for sure. So even those of us who've gone through shamanic practices that retrieve our soul and, and do all of those things, yeah. we still have to practice. We still have to find more and more ways to reinforce those intentions to be connected to ourselves, despite the fact that there are difficulties to uh, be heart-centered, despite the fact that all of these other things are presenting themselves that challenge that, or to, to be aware of those other parts that aren't heart-centered and to let mm -hmm. them go and to discover our attachments to them and to exactly. see how they're impacting our lives. These are all important parts of the journey. And they're not always easy, but before 2020 came, we've all said this, that it's the most difficult ceremonies that are the most productive, that actually mm -hmm. have the most gifts. And this is a good way to see this time that's so challenging in the ceremony that is our lives, right? Yeah, that's a big ceremony and it's our, our opportunity to evolve and, and, and become something else, evolve into something new. You know, you know, we we lost also this this you know we lost this connection with let's say with our higher self, with our deeper self, and I have my, I have this kind of of shamanic spin on the on on the higher self. I see it like we have let's say three three levels. We have the personal self. We have this persona, this ego mind, the uh, ego mind construct, who we think we are. You know. Then it's a next uh, level, shamas uh, call it the guardian self, uh, 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 the guardian spirit. We can call it the true self, the higher self. Jung was calling it uh, uh, the daimon. He, he, he even gave a name. Yes. He, he even gave a name to this high. Uh, uh, daimon was called Philemon, you know? <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and, and the will of this uh, true self or, or this guardian spirit is for us to individuate, to become who we really are. To, mm -hmm. And the third level will be the gray spirit, let's say God had the source, how you want to mm -hmm. call it. And the idea is that all these three has to be, uh, they have to be aligned, you know, and this, when these three are aligned, the, you know, there is your axis mundi, the, uh, you know, that's your, your central space. Ideally, at some point to make this radical, you know, radical commitment, you know, that only unconditional love will rule our life. Having this, this picture in mind, we can feel when we are out of alignment. We can feel when the personal will and let's say a greater will, they are not really in line and get back to the center. <laughs> yes, that causes suffering and that's what we experience. And so the way that our society often works is not with these things in mind. That's why it's such a challenge. And the greater strides that we make towards aligning, which means, I mean, this is the reason why people come back from these ceremonies and go, okay, so many things in my life I need to change. I need to change my job, <laughs> uh, my partner, <laughs> you know, this, 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 this relationship isn't working because the decisions that we made were coming from these external influences and not internal ones. So that alignment comes when we start connecting within and saying, you know, who, who am I really with this yes. openness and, and willingness to honor that? And again, like a lot of these external processes that are sort of offered to us as young people in this world are not oriented in that way. It's about them and what they expect and, and what mm -hmm. is expected of you and what they feel you must do and all that. It's not, who are you? Let's figure that out. What do you love? What do you love? Yeah, you know, yeah, do what you a, love. Yeah, this is very good, different. <laughs> that's a good question for, for, for a journey and for a life journey in general, you know, who I really yes. am. What helped me a lot in my, you know, in my work and in my journey and what I've seen also that helped a lot of people is having some practices that can help us in this life journey. One practice that I have in mind you know, always when you know when when it when something comes up is to look at this kind of cleaning up growing up and waking up stages what the cleaning up means is bringing all these 
these dissociated parts of ourselves together. You know, maybe you've heard and your listener heard about the internal family system. And I think Robert's yeah. words. I've done that with hypnosis too. So it's very good. And the idea is that we have all these inner children and all these parts that you know, as a result of trauma, you know, as a result of certain events in our life, they are not online. They are yes. not... Uh, they are not integrated in ourself. This is what the shamans would call soul loss. So a part of our, our life force is missing. A part of us is not, is, is not fully present there. And mm. one practice is to, 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 to invite and integrate those, those parts back. And uh, I yes. can give you an example, like a personal example from, from, from my, from my journey. Uh, uh, when when my uh, my uh, my grandmother died, I was five year old, and I was spending until that time I was spending all my time with her. So she was there with me twenty four seven. When she died, my parents didn't know how to how to explain that, how to deal with that. So they just didn't talk about it. She just suddenly she disappeared from my life, and I didn't even remember how I felt at that time. But, mm. but in a ceremony, it happened to me that uh, I was just presented with that five-year-old self and I felt how he felt and he felt abandoned, he felt unsafe, he felt alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And my tendency was like, I was just embrace him and tell him that he's safe, that he's loved, that everything will be okay. And something happened. Uh, physically I felt that I could breathe differently I felt that uh, yeah something changed inside me you know my heart opened a bit more so this is an example that like this kind of bringing one one of these wounded inner children back so we created them or they dissociated from from our from from us a result of certain events but we are there mother, father, <laughs> we have to bring them back and, and, mm-hmm. and embrace them because yeah, the idea is, you know, is to become whole, to integrate the self. So this is one part, let's say, of this stage of the cleaning up. Another part will be, it's called shadow work in many, you know, in, in many, you know, like in many techniques and schools. And the idea with, with this shadow material is unconscious repressed materials, things that we judge, we don't want to be identified with, and we push it in the unconscious, we push it down there. Maybe we judge it, or maybe it was our culture, our family, we felt or just felt that is not something that is acceptable. And these are also parts of ourselves that we need to to bring back and integrate because there is energy, there is potential, is creativity. An example of this unconscious material that can be there, that it can serve us, uh, how it really works so with this material is we don't really see it in meditation. We don't, it's hard to become aware of it. We see it uh, projected on the outside. So when you have this kind of extreme judgment of others or something that really bothers us on the outside, it's good to look inside and look is it some maybe something inside myself that i don't recognize that i don't embrace and i see it projected on the outside so let's say i'm really bothered by people that are controlling let's say i, I don't uh, uh, like authority uh, this is a part of me that had that that controlling urge you know and uh, uh, not that controlling energy but because i I don't want to accept that I have this controlling part inside myself. It's projecting on the outside. This is one example of this, this unconscious material. Or another example, let's say I'm really pissed off, really bothered when someone is late for meetings or they don't keep their promises. They take things too easily, let's say. And maybe it's a part of me that is too rigid and is too to, yeah, probably rigid is the best way to describe it. And because I don't allow myself to be a bit more playful, 
to be a bit more in the moment, to be to take things a bit easier, because I don't allow myself to be like that. I see projected on the outside in other people, and and I hate it when I see people that uh, that don't take things too rigorous and too serious. And here it's a spectrum. It, 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 it's a spectrum. It's a range. It's like a volume of a melody of a song. The idea is not to be turn you know, too low so we don't hear it a lot but also not to be turned to to you know, too high because the song is not harmonious anymore it has to be in the middle so it's harmony in in, in listening to the song yeah and i mean this is going to be different for everyone i think that um what i'd like to mention too is that these these are just so personal um so yeah. Yeah. what we so I want to mention a few things uh, based on what you brought up. Um, this this controlling thing again, how that shows up for each of us is very unique. Um, what I discovered is um, for me was I've been I've been going through such a big uh, shift, so many of them lately, and one of them has to do with the fact that uh, we started to unschool my son. This came up in ceremony like quite some time ago, and it took me. Mm a lot of work to work with the people around me to finally and have circumstances present themselves, you know, and that's part of the surrendering um, to allow that to happen uh, that finally helps me achieve this. And then it's been this whole um, recognizing to what degree that I was trying to control things, believing that that was a responsibility, that that, that was tied to responsibility. And I remember years ago, um, you know, this, this inner dialogue that has taught me so much with what I thought of as ayahuasca or my higher self or what have you, this wise voice that teaches me, very much a teacher, talked about uh, disentangling things. She kind of showed me this, this tangled up stuff. And I got the impression of the idea that it wasn't like, it wasn't so simple, the answer to some of my questions or my concerns or things I had to resolve. It had to do with disentangling my beliefs. So this was one good example where I believed I had to be res to be a responsible parent. I had to, you know, do all of this controlling. And then when, when we were, when I was moving, you know, so much in the direction of unschooling and, and really allowing him room to, you know, my son to, to make his own decisions, I had to discover what inside of me was having difficulty with that and also discovering to what degree I was being controlling and how I felt about all that and all my beliefs around it and all the rest of it. And it's just, and it has been this slow disentangling and so liberating, like <laughs> so amazing. And uh, so, yeah, yeah um, I, I think that there are things that in our lives that, that come up that allow us to see, you know, how these things are happening. And then there's this this um, this greater experience. Um, a lot of a lot of the things that we have imposed on this life, uh, these these constructs um, and these ways of living that are so structured and rigid, we have kind of clung to and felt like security in that. And yet, what we're being asked to do, really, and a lot of the illnesses that we have are around this confinement, you know, being so the path so rigidly set out for us and very little room for self-expression, individuality, and all of these things. And so I think that we're seeing an opportunity for that to, to come to light and for each of us in our own way to be free to do that. And sometimes that is a challenge in and of itself, right? You know, what do I do now? Like, I know how to live that other life that I did not like. And then, you know, <laughs> this, this blank, blank check you're given is like, oh my God, don't know what to do with it. And, and it's great. Like it can be wonderfully liberating and it can also present its own challenges. Um, but I do see this time as being one that is allowing us that particular journey. So many people's lives have changed because uh, those things that, you know, they were doing are not possible anymore. And now yeah. we have to find new ways and we have to be creative. And a lot of the times we're going to external sources to figure out what we should do when really 
the way that we're learning now that's much healthier, that is a reflection of self-love is to go within and say, what do I love? How to make that work instead of, oh, that can't, I got to do this. Saying, let's give that a shot. Let's, let's, Let's allow that to to unfold and see what's possible there. Let's learn about, you know, what drives us, what makes us, you know, feel that that joy and that what are we what are we about? You know, what what would we really love and, and follow that? Even that will present opportunities for us to come up against those darker <laughs> parts of ourselves. Um, yeah. For me, <laughs> I've never done. You know, people say, oh, do you do shadow work? And it's like, well, I don't really call it that. And I don't really yeah. focus on that. I, I focus I on totally the path that do. I want to travel. Yeah. And those yeah. things naturally yeah. will come up as a result of me saying, okay, here's where I want to go. Let's let's make that yeah, happen. What stays and then, in the way? Yeah, and yeah, what, stays yeah, in the what way? stands in the way of that? Yeah. And, and these things will present themselves. And they will, you know, they could be described yeah. as <laughs> very dark. And yeah. there won't always be a story attached. Sometimes... I will get it. Sometimes I will make that association. Sometimes not. Sometimes there's just this awful, ugly feeling <laughs> and this figure that presents itself uh, that is embodied, you know, that stuff <laughs> that I'm saying goodbye to. And sometimes it's not e easy, you know, but it's it's happened time and time again and always a different energy, but just as distasteful. And um, yeah, and then the behaviors are the lessons that lead up to that presentation for me anyway again everybody's journey is different so yes I do it it's just I don't call it you know shadow work and when you hear that like there's a lot of people who practice all kinds of things in all kinds of different ways so we don't always know what what people mean when they say that right the, but yeah I see it, yeah I see it more like self-integration like mm -hmm. becoming whole like yes. a knowledge and, and bring back all these parts that were let's say not there the, 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 we are not aware of yeah and, and not it, everybody's going to do it the same and that's fine mm -hmm. this is part of respecting our individuality too and mm -hmm. what we don't what i would like to mention is that yeah. what i see sometimes happening is we have had these these rigid ways presented to us from a young age you know these are the ways that you must do things and you must do it this way and within these confined definitions of what needs to happen in what order and all of these things right and we work hard to to move beyond that and create our own path what we don't want to do is create those rigid things all over again within the spiritual you know i mean some people might want to and that's fine but just being aware that that is that is a potential pitfall is like okay everything has to be done yeah. this way and called this yeah. and yeah you know. the no it's good to have a structure or to have a framework or to have a map but the map is not the territory so at the end you know we you know you have the map you know in your pocket when you go in the forest to know that north maybe is, it's in that direction but this exploration of the forest it's an individual process it's very okay. unique to you you know the you know the birds that you notice the butterflies that come to you the trees that you get you know connected with that's your journey and it's very mm -hmm. unique to you so yeah so it's so we know that we have a map there and it's in the back of the mind and sometimes it's useful from the mind you know it's like a, this kind of assurance that uh, yeah there is a map there you know for the mind to go along with us in the journey but it's a journey of the heart <laughs> you know the mind mm -hmm. has to come along with it and to be you know to be in the same team you know we need both to to you know to collaborate in this but it, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a journey of the heart is this heart intelligence that we need to get in touch to and and rediscover we you know like in the modern society we, we emphasize too much this 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 cognitive intelligence the intellectual intelligence yes. mind but there are so many other there are like 12 12 uh, 12 types of intelligences you know it's body intelligence it's emotional intelligence uh, relationship intelligence art intelligence and so on so mm -hmm. again uh, to move a bit the focus and 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 looking you know around us there are other types of intelligences there and the, 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 there are more neurons in the heart area than in the brain so it's a different deeper higher type of intelligence there <laughs> sure yeah and like this is again something that within uh the framework of our 
you know, societal workings, like the way that we bring up children, um, you know, when they go to school and all these things, this is not centralized central work that's done there. It's the, it's, it's not even on the board. It's not there. <laughs> it's missing. They're mm-hmm. just starting to introduce social emotional work. And it's mm-hmm. like, wow, that says a lot as to where we are, like where humanity is. So the impression that I have gotten, you know, working with this, with this higher consciousness and learning from it is we have to be patient and understand that we are in our infancy when it comes to these things, right? We're just learning a lot of that. We talk about it and stuff, but we're just getting the fact that that is a big missing piece. We're just starting to realize that and to, and to start to work it into our lives. So, you know, it's going to be a challenge, right? But it's (laughs) it's well worth it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I just want to continue a bit with, uh, uh, you know, with the growing up. Uh, uh, so the cleaning up stage is bringing all these parts back to where they belong, you know, to, to ourselves, but and inviting them back home. The growing up, the growing up stage will be uh, this ability to see the perspective of others, to be able to be, you know, in the other person's shoes. And is this experiment, I think Piaget was doing it, is the, uh, the double color a uh, uh, ball experiment. So he, he would take a, a, a ball that would be half red and half colored in green. And when he, uh, uh, he would show the, uh, uh, the ball to a three years old, two, three years old uh, child, it will explain you. This is, as uh, uh, so it will turn the red to the child, it will say, this is red and this is green and this is red again and this is green. And then at some point it will point um, the, the red part towards the child and it, it will ask the child, what color do you see? And the child will say red, because red was facing him. And it will ask, what color do I see? And the child will say red. So at that age, uh, they don't have the capacity to see the perspective of other. It, it will re- if, if you repeat the experience with a six, seven year old, they will be able to point correctly when they will ask, what color do you see? Red. What color do I see? Green. So mm. this is an example of uh, this kind of a move, a change from like egocentric perception to a more like group centric, ethnocentric, and then global centric. So mm-hmm. how, many, how many more perspectives can we embody? Uh, can we see things from the other person perspective, from the third, uh, second uh, person or third or fourth or fifth person perspective. And this is part of, of this stage of growing up, realizing that the, uh, no, the abs- no one has the absolute truth. You know, the absolute truth is just this, it's like a sphere and it's a sum of all these partial uh, views, all these partial truths, all these perceptions, all this, uh, this, uh, uh, these ways of everyone has a part of you know, of the truth. Mm-hmm. And actually, again, this is a very good example as to how it's different for everybody. So there are those of us who are very empathetic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what I had to learn, and I happen to be one of those people, is to stop doing that so much <laughs> <laughs> because I would lose myself in everybody else's experience uh, yeah that's a very good point uh, the idea is to have awareness of all these three stages but th- uh, there are moments when it's okay to be egocentric you need to survive you need to take a certain action you are in a car accident what you do in that moment you know but there are moments when when it's okay to see the perspective of other one and when to see a global perspective you know how is you know what uh, you know this uh, you know affects everyone on the planet so, but it's a scale, it, you know, it's a, like a, you know, it's a scale that we, you know, we move up and down. It's not that we are fixed. If you are fixed only on the global, well, you might not uh, uh, make it through the week, you know? Yes, you'll miss a lot of things. And, and, if you are like, and that can happen. Yeah, and that, yeah. that also starts to sort of um, flow into um, being aware of what you're focusing on and where your mind is and knowing that you have a choice in that. But getting back to the empathetic, there, there's a lot of people who miss it. So they'll hear all these discussions 
spiritual discussions about ego and all these things. And like, there are many of us who sit there going so confused because, and this is why I've had so many ceremonies that have been deliberately about the opposite. Your challenge is to do something very different. And this is the work we will do together. It's so individualistic. And if something is ringing a bell for you, that's great. But if you find yourself, you know, needing more clarification, it is really good idea to go within and see what's right for you. See where your work needs to be done. Because honestly, for me, it's just been the opposite. I've had to really rein it in because my mm -hmm. mind would be and heart would be going out and just taking everybody else's position except my own. You know, I was really good at it. I was the peacemaker in my family, you know, mm -hmm. took on all of that responsibility for so long. And I'm now having to become aware when I'm doing it again. It's difficult at times because it's such a lovely idea to be so empathetic and all the rest of it, but it can cause mm -hmm. so many problems. And it's it's certainly not honoring, you know, yeah, myself. About, and so that's been... Balance. Yeah, it's about balance, you know. And, yeah. And being grounded and... Uh... And how I'm doing it. Yeah. And, and, and why. And, <laughs> and so, yeah. And yeah. all those things. Sure. So again, it's different for everybody. Not every person who has this deep empathy is the same. Um, but I, there are all kinds of themes attached there. This responsibility. I think that at a young age with so much conflict in my family, I really felt like this was, I was going to solve that problem by, you know, mm -hmm. helping right. everybody help understand everyone. everybody else. <laughs> And the problem is that I assumed that that's what they wanted to do, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and they didn't necessarily, you know, um, and you can't make those decisions for others, even though they sound lovely. Uh, not every, you know, people have the right to make their own decisions about these things, right? And if they're not on board, they're not. And that's okay. Yeah. It's just, exactly. it's important to be aware and honest and, and open about that and, and respect it, you know? Exactly. And, and it's also very empowering for them to get it by themselves and, and go through oh, it by yes. themselves. Because if yes. they receive, let's say, too much assistance and too much help from the outside, well, it's, no, it's like a cesarean birth. You know, the baby mm -hmm. didn't uh, go through the process all the way, you know? So, yes. so they need to, 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 to figure out by themselves, you know, with the guidance, when the guidance is, is, is needed and it's requested, you know, but at the yes. end, it's important for, for each of us to, 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 to do it ourselves. We need to plant our, you know, to paint our canvas, you know, <laughs> ourselves, yes. it's, it's our creation. <laughs> How we do it, it's up to us. Yeah, or not. Like I mean, <laughs> some not, people yeah. they just will not. This is not what they're what they're here to do. Or you know, I don't know because I'm not them. And it, it's very important for our collective progression is to accept that, that that not everybody's going to be doing this, and it's not really up to us to choose for everybody else. Exactly. Um, but for those of us who are, I can answer so many more questions by figuring out what I was about and how I responded and what I learned from it all too. I mean, there was an essential aspect of that experience that was really about who I am. And then now I can use those gifts to help others who exactly. do yeah. choose. Yeah, to and become themselves do. and, and, and yeah. to help them to become themselves, you know, to individuate. Yeah. Because it's like in a theater play. Uh, everybody has a different role, you know, you know, plays a different character and it's all unique Absolutely. and it's all part of a puzzle. <laughs> So, the, so you know, the journey is to, you know, to embody your character, to play it at the best, you know, and yeah. not everybody, you know, needs to play the same character. Well, that's a boring play. <laughs> if everybody is <laughs> Richard the Third, you know, <laughs> I don't know how, how the play will, will, will go on, you know, with, with their different characters, with their different flavors in this, in this cosmic uh, play. This is, yeah, this is true diversity. This is really, you know, what diversity means. We're all individuals and we all have these unique gifts and characteristics and some of them may be very provoking and that, that role is important too. You know, oh, when yeah. we're provoked, there's a reason for it and it can be really important to discover what is it in us that's reacting in what way and why and all of those things, even though it may seem the most obvious thing. I remember really early in my journey asking about this. 
And I had all of those big reactions, you know, those bad people and da da da, you know, <laughs> and and like this was just I was a noob, you know, it was early, early on, and it was like, yeah, you leave them alone, and this was in my mind, right? You leave them alone in your mind; they have their their purpose too, and it's not not your business to figure all that out. That's you just leave them be and focus on yourself, and that's really just been the way ever since right and it's good it's so good because you can go on to those roads and you know you just you find yourself not getting anywhere it's like there's a reason for that because you're not them you know you're you <laughs> exactly this is what it means to be centered to be yourself to to and to find this you know this this axis mundi this inner center this the center within yourself in your heart and Stay in that place yeah. <laughs> and act from there and act from that central <laughs> place. Yeah, even when that place is in pain and there are so many different ways to go about responding to that. And uh, I think that, again, this is the diversity of this integrative path. There are times that, you know, I need to go into that. There are times I need to surrender. There are times I need to do all kinds of different things to move through this in the way that's best for me. Yeah, and exactly. everybody will find their way. Oh, you mentioned, you know, trauma and, and, and looking at certain events, you know, in life and not focus too much on that. Yeah, because it's not important at the end why we have a problem is how, how, how we solve it, how we deal it. You know, the mind will always try to find the source and find this kind of causality. Uh, this has happened to me when I was three years old and this is why I have this problem, you know, mm -hmm. right now. But, you know, uh, you know, this, you know, the landscape of, of, of the psyche, it's a lot larger than we believe, you know, it's not only this biographical, uh, you know, area it's also the perinatal uh, uh, well, no time that we, we mentioned before can come from different places. Let's call them past lives can come from parallel, sure. parallel mm -hmm. existences and parallel life and ancestral things that we, you know, that we, 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 we embody here and we bring uh, here in life and from all kinds of places, archetypal, collective unconscious, Mm -hmm. on so it's not so important where it comes from when you feel a certain let's say pain <laughs> emotional mental how you want it. well, it, it's important how you deal with it you know sure i think that both things are important um what i do find is that you know now that we are in this stage where so many people are discovering the concept of trauma and mm -hmm. yes it's important i think to to recognize the relationship between uh, some behaviors that we have and choices we've made and those um, those root causes and then the big progress is when you come to the point where it's like okay yes all of that is true now what are you going to do about it right <laughs> yeah. now how do we really heal so that we're not about that so that doesn't become our thing oh I was you know this so that's why I'm that and then I mean it's a choice right you can stay there yeah, and yeah and yeah, yeah it can be a never-ending a never-ending going back and trying to fix things you know yeah if, you know we have this obsession with the persona with our story you know and and, and this can bring us to the you know to the third uh, stage the, the waking up stage and yes realizing who we really are well if we, when we realize that we are not, they are, you know, we are more than this personal self. Yes. We are more than what we see. We are more than our story. We are more than what we identify with. You know, I was born there, and I have, I, I, I went to school, and I think I, I graduated from the school, and this is my story. The waking up is this process where to identify the seer, what is there that was always there within that you know it, it, it is a princess there that was there when you were five years old and you're looking in the mirror it was something inside you that was looking through your eyes the mm -hmm. same presence was there oh no like two hours ago when you were preparing for, for for you know for the podcast it's something there that it's unchanged it's a it you know it's a field it's an awareness there from where everything is arising and this journey of awakening if you want to call it you know to use another label <laughs> of waking up is this journey from being identified with a limited personal self 
to zoom in to that space, to that field from where everything is arising, to the you know the witness, the seer. Mm -hmm. And in yeah. that moment, when you are not identified so much with your story, with your body, with your thoughts, uh, then when you go beyond that, then something that doesn't exist cannot be traumatized. So the whole approach to trauma and what happened to you is changed. You know, it's a, this kind of ontological shift. So it's very, you know, it's a paradox. It's very important to work on this biographical stuff and what happened to us and we are wounded and it's a wounded part that we need to bring back and so on but at some point it's okay to move on and go beyond our story and realize yeah. what we really are you know and yeah. what we really are cannot be traumatized <laughs> was never traumatized and it will never be <laughs> yes exactly like i think that um presenting that as a very important opportunity is is good <laughs> because I think that societally and in many other ways, like many other aspects of society tends toward the negative and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know the news, all the rest of it. And there can be this awful, tremendous imbalance that is so much a part of our experience for so long that we're not even aware of how it plays out in our daily experience and in our lives and our tendencies within. Mm -hmm. And we are very good, many of us, at going in and finding the damage. And, oh, I understand that. Oh, it goes yeah. deeper. Oh, da, da. on and on and on and on and on. And, to, you know, to the point where this becomes the journey only. And it doesn't yeah. have to be that way. You know, there, there can be that intention to say, I am willing to see. It's not unwillingness to see all this stuff. It's just to be productive about it, to decide that I'm going to see this for the purpose of healing, not so that I can, you know, wear this label now and say that's the reason exactly. for everything, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> because that doesn't really serve us and it doesn't serve others. And it, it may seem like a, a relief to say, oh, okay. And it is at times, certainly does feel that way. Mm -hmm. Wow, now I get it. Now I understand why. And it's like, what do I want now though? Because I don't, even though this is part of my past, I don't have to, you know, wear that label forever. That is something mm -hmm. that did happen then. Where do I want to be now? And, you know, again, these can be things that unfold so differently for each of us. I find that there's a whole atmosphere attached to some of these past events and it diminishes the more work that I do. And then there are times where I can sense it wanting to come back and that whole, you know, victim <laughs> stance wants to present itself again. And it's like, okay, you know what? Actually, I don't have to do that. I will acknowledge all of those things, but I don't have to play that role. You know, you know the, uh, uh, it's inappropriate for me right now because yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's too much of the past trying to impose itself now. You know, now I, I have a chance to do things differently and be yeah. in a different state. <laughs> Exactly. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, you express it very well. You know, is this this ego mind construct that it's you know it likes the known, it likes the you know the you know the path that was already you know you know, you know worked on is is not you know is not comfortable with the unknown. So sometimes we prefer to go in the same space, even if we feel terrible there, but it's known. We know how we we yes. fear more the unknown and the new. So th this is why this, we have this tendency to repeat things from the past. And it, you know, a good analogy you know, comes to mind right now. That Yeah, it's good to attend to those things, but it's a time to move on. It's like going to school. You know, it's a time for primary school, but then it's, it's a time to move on. You don't stay there forever. You, know? you go to secondary, mm -hmm. to high school, to university, and so on. So it's a mm -hmm. time for everything, but always have this kind of moving beyond where you are evolving surfing the wave you know mm -hmm. growing evolving moving we need to adapt and 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 learn how to surf and how to embrace the unknown and how to 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 to, to take a leap of faith in the unknown yeah and give ourselves permission to do that and that's where the being careful not to identify so heavily with the past gives us that opportunity and I'm, I'm not saying it's not challenging. It can be at times, but I remember another message that came to me when I was digging into something that was like really unpleasant. I was trying to unravel it and this voice kicked in. It's like, where are you going with that? Because you'll get there. 
you know <laughs> so now sometimes that remind that voice kicks in and reminds me and i change my trajectory and go on a different path and it's like okay here's where i want to go then so let let's take all the energy that i was just about to dig into all of that stuff mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i'll move it to here and decide like all of that stuff it is very impactful you know my personal trauma was you know deep i was very very young it i I, it affected me very deeply in fact so much so that one of the very first things ayahuasca said when she kicked in my very first ceremony was you've had a very difficult life (laughs) and immediately i started thinking about all the people who must have had it worse and this is my empathetic mind and my everything but me mind and this voice said we know you you think you didn't but you really did you know because of who you are and so there was an importance in me recognizing that and acknowledging it because i wasn't going to be able to heal if i didn't but exactly. there's been a very big thrust after you know delving in. i know that these things that i need to see and need to acknowledge will show up because I am open to it and it's my intention to heal, but I don't need to dwell there. (laughs) You know, I got it. And now, and, and then it's, that's fuel. It's like, okay, now let's use this, this understanding and this healing to do what it's not a destination. It's something that you achieve along the way to the destination being this much better state that isn't the victim. That isn't this heavy label or this past. It's what we really are beneath all of that stuff as you said in that that childlike state that's what we're surrendering to that magical state that sends out into the world all of these possibilities all this openness this joy this love uh this this really deep power that we have that's connected to this this greater reality uh that we want to tap into because otherwise we're driving ourselves right back into the past and right back into that darker stuff that's not where we want to reside (laughs) And and one of the practices that I, you know, I liked a lot, you know, the shamas are doing the the mestizo and the shipibo shamas in, uh, in 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 Peru, is this practice to, you know, to to see the sacred, to see the spirit in everyone, and they have this 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 greeting, uh, they say to kui to every you know to every person you meet during the day, to 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 an animal to a tree to a flower, to a bird, you say to Kui, it's just, it's a remembering that, you know, the same sick, you know, sickness that it's inside you, it's in that, uh, you know, it's in uh, the one you are greeting as well. Mm-hmm. And, and it's a good, you know, it's a practice, it's, uh, you know, it's a mantra that, uh, you know, you know, instead of, of keeping our mind occupied with, uh, uh, what did I did yesterday? Why did I do that? What <laughs> were I going to do in five years? Just a practice of presence is just to greet everything to you know with this uh, greeting, you know, to Kui. I see the spirit in you. I see the sacred in you that it's also in me. Yeah, that's what Namaste means too, right? Yeah, yeah, it's the same. It's, yeah, it's the same idea from Namaste. But I think Shamas, they, the difference is the uh, you know in you know in uh, in Peru they say to every every form of life you know oh, uh, yeah. every being to, to trees <laughs> to flowers to dogs to cats to everything not only to people to birds you no know, we are made yes. from the same fabric <laughs> and we have a relationship with everything around us too that was another early concept that mm-hmm. that I embraced and that that I found made oh, life yeah. mm-hmm. far more yeah. interesting and far more full that you know we do have a relationship with with everything people talk about their relationship with food or whatever mm-hmm. but we have a relationship with everything around us and and our energetic state is the driving force of that and our attitudes affect our energy and all the rest of it right so yes opening up to that connection is is a beautiful thing and that's of course part of that whole working with the elements, being aware that they are in your environment and, and harnessing that relationship in a really positive way can be great. Yeah, yeah, reconnecting with these this, this elements of nature and, and with our inner nature as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, important. exactly. Yeah. One last thing that came to my mind right mm-hmm. now is like, yeah, we, are, we, we put a lot of effort and we dedicate ourselves to this type of inner work of spiritual journey mm-hmm. that we are in. 
to be a better person, to 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 to, to have a better you know better better connection with with everyone. But you know, it's very important to you know in the same time not to take ourselves too too serious. You know, you know Dante called his his work Divina Commedia. You know, the divine comedy. Right. <laughs> You know, he didn't call it the purgatory or paradiso. To see this cosmic game, this this cosmic play that we are in, and uh, and and also have a laugh and use humor. You know, when when we hit this kind of difficult, you know, moments in our daily life, just humor. It's a very good. It's a very very healing element that we can use. It's really funny. Uh, this comes up every show, pretty much, because. Ah, yeah. <laughs> It, oh yeah, because it's used. It's used often, right? It's a very effective tool, and it's a really important part of life. I mean, it always has been, you know, for me. But I found it really initially unexpected, an association with spirituality, because I was brought up in Catholic environment where everything was so serious and mm. there was a lot of heaviness about it. So heavy. No and, sense of humor there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and like all the the whole colorful, imaginative, funny world of weird and wonderful world of shamanism to me was like, wow, this is so completely the opposite <laughs> to, you know, and all about empowering us rather than you know leaving it all up to this god guy, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, it was. Then, uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's powerful. <laughs> I think that you know the whole notion of of also, you know, lightening it up because you can't yeah. help but discover the humor in it, especially when we go through the crazy things that we do with medicines. And even afterwards, yeah, humor is inevitably part of it. And us bringing that into our daily practice and our daily, you know, yeah. ceremony yeah. is really important for sure. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, some of the most beautiful and the most potent mushrooms that grow in Peru, they you know, they grow on, on, on a cow's manure. And, uh, you know, <laughs> well, when you realize, never. you know, when, yeah. you know, when you realize, you know, the God comes out from the, see the cosmic <laughs> joke, you know? <laughs> yes. Many cosmic jokes for sure. In fact, my whole experience has been peppered with these, these inside jokes, you know, I couldn't mm -hmm. help but see how much they knew me, these spiritual dialogues and how they were needling me in in such a, a lovely way though it's so <laughs> personal and so funny it's like oh my god they really know me there's just no escape from that <laughs> you know it's very funny and we need that now more than ever let's not ever oh, yeah. forget yeah. you know yeah. that this is if you want to surrender humor is an excellent way to shake things up shake you out of those mm -hmm. heavy reactions and into something else so glad you brought that up because, yeah, I don't mind that it comes up every single show because it's that important. The poop is needed. <laughs> yes, yes, we're in the poop. So, you know, it's natural that what comes out of it can be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of humor. <laughs> yes. Uh, All right, this, Dan. Uh, so, so how do people get in touch with you and where do they yeah, find you online? Yeah, so they can so they can find me, you know, if they Google Shamanica Institute. So they will find me also on Facebook if they type Shamanica Institute. And mm -hmm. my, my, web, my website is integralshamanist.net. All right. Thank you so much, Dan. It's been thank such a very, pleasure. Uh, thank you so much for the invite. Thank you for the work that you do. And take care. And I'm sure we'll be in touch again. Thank you. Tukui. <laughs> thank you. Namaste. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Ayahuasca Talks. Please visit RebeccaHayden.com for more ayahuasca integration content and for information about working with me and using hypnosis as an empowering integration tool.